Hello Universe, how are you doing today? I am back and I know people are probably getting irritated or worn out on talking about this George Zimmerman issue, but I was talking, I was working earlier today with one of the team and he happened to mention to me that he had heard about this preacher in Harlem who had been going, who went off and essentially it happened to go up on black people at the time talking about the Zimmerman issue and about how people were judging George Zimmerman. And I watched the video, I found it on YouTube. It hasn't gone necessarily super viral, but what has happened is it's been posted a few times. It's, you know, excuse me, in the higher number of people watching it, probably, you know, under 100,000, but there's been quite a few people who have watched it. And I found his perspective really interesting and in, in ways really right on. So I sort of wanted to talk about it. Well, and sort of, obviously, I want to talk about it, otherwise I wouldn't be here. But <laughs> So let's just talk about, I'll, I'll put a link to the video in, your, in the description below so you can go and check it out. But essentially what this man, this preacher does is he gets up and he says, you're, George, you're judging George Zimmerman because you're not saved yet. And to define more of what he's talking about is he talks about, you know, you judge George Zimmerman. He said, you know, Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton and all these guys, he said, they got it wrong. He said that, you know, uh, George Zimmerman's not white. He's Latino. He said his father's Baptist and his mother is from Peru. He said, it's not white. He's uh, Latino. Now, and he said, but that's neither here nor there, basically. He says, you know, but that's, that's inconsequential. Well, what he means by Baptist, though, is... <laughs> Because I think a lot of people can get uh, can, can, confused by that. I'm not associating him with the Pope because the Pope, the Pope is Catholic, mind you. But what he's talking about is saying that Christianity is a uh, is more of a European and non-American philosophy. It's not like a white American philosophy. He's talking about how his he comes from a different culture of. The Baptist are of a different culture. And, and, and also, he's probably also trying to bring to the point that he's a man, he's a, a man of God, or he's a, uh, he comes from people of God. So he's not any color. He's just a man, you know, just like a woman would be a woman. So he's, he's, in, he's not focusing on this aspect of. The only thing I can associate is he's talking about how uh, George Zimmerman comes from people who are from more European descent. So Europeans wouldn't necessarily be considered whites or whatever. White is really an American term. Okay, it's, it's an American concept. Just like black is an American concept. You don't go up and see a black British person. You know what I mean? You just see a black, you just see a British person. You know what I mean? So he's, he's British and he's, you know, his skin tone is dark brown. So he's that. But, you know, they don't really go into this whole white, black and all this sort of stuff like that normally. At least you don't see a lot of that advertised in the media. But regardless, he says you're judging George Zimmerman because as a black person, you're judging him because he's a white person or a Latino person who killed a black person. And he says, but why are you judging him? He says, you know, what is, he says, if you're judging him, it's because you're a black person and you're seeing the world through black eyes and you're not saved. You don't know Jesus because what he's talking about in religion is in the eyes of God, all men and women are created equal. That we're all people, first and foremost, and you shouldn't be judging on the color of your skin. If you're caught up on that, then you're the one who's caught up on race. That you're not judging the man or woman by their character, you're judging them by the color of their skin and making predetermined notions about them. And I thought that was really true in a lot of ways. Now, I happen to be, you know, a, a person who is of French descent, not necessarily white. I mean, look white on camera, whatever, that's fine. That doesn't matter what color I am. But that's what his point is, is we shouldn't be looking at this to judge people. We should be looking at the quality of the character. And he says, you know, he uses an example. He says, you know, let's talk about George Zimmerman. Let's say... Well, let's just talk about you. He talks about how if you go to, to a certain, like a Martin Luther, the Martin Luther King house, which is, I guess, is a more questionable area of the Harlem area. If you go to the George Zimmerman 
uh, to the George Zimmerman, to the <laughs> Martin Luther King house there, and you get on an elevator, it's you, you're going to see someone from, from your church, and you're going to go pray for them, and you get on the, the elevator with someone who's wearing a hoodie, and it's you and them alone, and they're kind of just looking there and looking at you or whatever, and, the, and, and, and you're on this elevator alone, no one else around, what are you thinking? And he says, you know what you're thinking. He says, you know you're, you're wondering, what is this person going to do to me? Why are, they, why, why are they looking at me? What, what is going on with this? This is, this is uncomfortable. I'm scared. He said, it's got nothing to do with the color of the man's skin. He said, you know that all these people who wear hoodies have been shown to do raping, murdering, maiming, all that stuff. Now, I don't necessarily think it has anything to do with, with a hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know people who wear hoodies, and, and they're definitely not of that uh, nature. But what he's saying is, is people who look questionable. Pe you know, it doesn't matter about what their skin tone was. And George Zimmerman, from what I've been having conversations and learning, George Zimmerman actually didn't just go after Trayvon Martin. He was calling the police, and as he was following Trayvon Martin, because he was like, there's someone suspicious in my neighborhood, and I don't know what's going on. And he must have seen behavioral habits. Now, this... Preacher talks about how Trayvon Martin had Skittles and a watermelon Arizona drink. I don't necessarily know that that dictates you're a gangbanger or whatever. He mentioned like him being on dope, like uh, high on uh, marijuana or something, popped. And I don't know if he was or not. I've never heard anything about George uh, about Trayvon Martin's uh, autopsy if he was under any kind of an influence. But that'd be interesting to know, because he says, you know, when people are under influence, they become paranoid, and they start to act suspicious. And if that was going on, if he, if he was, don't know who he was, but if he was, and it would be anyone who's on pot, and if they are paranoid by it, they, that's one of their reactions to it, then they could be acting suspicious, and it makes people go, who is this person? And they could call the cops out of suspicion. They had already been having crime and issues in George Zimmerman's neighborhood. And he was one of the community watch people trying to do it. To try to, to, to help halt this and protect their neighborhood. And Trayvon Martin, whether he got lost and ended up... I don't know how he ended up in their neighborhood. He could have been lost for all I know. Maybe he was going for a walk. No one knows. But if you have... If, you, if he had any kind of a drug issue going on. If he was under the influence of anything. And was acting suspicious then anyone could have done it. It didn't have to be George Zimmerman. It could have been anyone who could have called the police and said, I don't know who this person is. It looked weird. George Zimmerman was in the wrong place at the wrong time, just as Trayvon Martin was. And I don't mean literally they didn't belong there, but I mean that they were in a bad place when in, in all this culminated in something. But George Zimmerman did try to call the police. Now, there are people who will say that you know Trayvon Martin made racial comments or whatever. I, I don't worry about all that. I don't know if Trayvon Martin made racial comments or not. He's not here. I haven't seen the tape. But if Zor Zimmerman called 911, there's proof that he called 911. And if he said suspicious person versus black person, then he really wasn't trying to judge the man by the quality of his skin. He was saying, hey, listen, there's someone suspicious in my neighborhood, and I'm worried about it. And that's really all there is to it. And then they say, okay, describe the person. And if he has to tell them the color of his skin so he can help them describe them, then he's going to have to tell them the color of their skin. He called black, African American, dark brown, whatever he wants to say. But that comes afterwards. He approached it from a suspicious person. And a lot of people, you know, will say, well, he gets to go on with his life. No, George Zimmerman doesn't get to go on with his life. And I'll get back to the preacher in a second. George Zimmerman does not get to go on with his life. Even after being acquitted, he's still going to be judged for the rest of his life, at least for a very long time by people for what happened. They are. Even when, if, if, even if all the evidence came out to prove he was innocent, just like people who were in prison, of all ethnicities and, 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 and creeds and genders, who have been in prison and then were proven, proven to have not killed anyone. That, that they, they, they were wrongfully incarcerated for decades, and then they come out. They're still held, it's still held against them, even though they did nothing and they were a victim of circumstance and potentially the system pushing them into that because they wanted to blame someone. And as a result, he's not going to get to go on with his life. And do we know truly what happened? I think that George Zimmerman probably did what he had to do for his neighborhood. There's no indications that he didn't. 
the whole race concept has just been brought up because people are dividing it. And that's what, getting back into what the preacher says. He says, you're judging him because of the way you see the world. And until you've been saved and until you know Jesus, then you're not seeing, you're not seeing the world from a spiritual and religious standpoint. You're seeing it as a black person. I think the same case would stand if this preacher happened to be white and was saying it to a white crowd. You're seeing it from this perspective. You're not seeing it as Jesus tells you to see it. You're not seeing it as, you know, we're all created equal in the eyes of God. Let's judge people by the quality of their character. You're seeing it from a total, you're seeing it from this. And really you have to get down to judging people by the quality of their character. How, you know, and that's one of the things I disagree with the most in this whole process for George Zimmerman, is they did not allow character information about Trayvon Martin to be included. The prosecution could have brought up stuff about George Zimmerman. I'm saying all bets are on. If you're going to bring up about one person, you have to bring about the other person. You have to bring it up about both parties who were participant and key in this. There were no eyewitnesses to anything outside of George Zimmerman and Trayvon Martin being physically involved in an altercation. But if you have no witnesses to lead to it, you have to take evidence that exists prior to it. For example, the phone call from George Zimmerman, you have to look at how they were in the community, how they were seen, and how all of, you know, how they could have come together. Was it that George Zimmerman was high? Could he have been high and paranoid and going after Trayvon Martin? Does he show a history of that? This Trayvon Martin. There's already stuff that says Trayvon Martin had character issues. I'm not saying he was a bad person, but he had some issues that had been unresolved in him. And unfortunately, as a result of it, put him in the wrong place at the wrong time with someone who was trying to defend his neighborhood, and as a result, he got shot. Now, it's sad that he got shot and killed, but I don't think it had anything to do with his skin tone. I think just like this preacher's concern was stating, if you see someone suspicious in your neighborhood, or you're around someone who's acting suspicious because they seem high or you know geeked out or whatever, you're going to be scared. And if you're part of a community watch program, part of your whole concept is to watch and do your best to call the police, which is what George Zimmerman did, and if you can, to intervene. And he basically got involved with Trayvon Martin, whether he initiated it or Trayvon Martin turned around and said, what the hell are you following me for? And George Zimmerman starts asking him questions, and if, the, and if he's pissed off, you know, wh however they interacted, something went wrong, and now one of them is no longer here. But it comes down to, you have to look at the quality of a character of a person. And this is, and, and, and when I said this earlier, I said, you know, this you know, there needs to be a balance in our society where we stop looking at each other for this and start judging by the quality of character. Because you can't. It's easy. Can you count on someone? It's, that, that, that's not a... This is so many... This is so much about looking at people for by, by character. Can you trust someone? If, you, if someone says, I'm going to be there at 930, are they at 930 or do they wait until 1030 to show up? You know, uh, you know, it, it, if, if, if you say, don't lie to me, and the next thing you know, you're hearing lies, it tells you about their character. It, it's important for you to know who you're interacting with. Just look at all these people who get cheated on. They've been in relationships for years and years and years. And they get lied to, and, and, and then they find out the quality of this person's character is in question. Are they bad people? No. But the point is, is that we need to look at each other as people first and foremost, and not focus on this. There's always going to be people who live, unfortunately for now, there's always, the, for, for now, not always, but for, for now, there are people who live in more questionable neighborhoods than others. Some more crime is more prevalent, potentially because of security purposes or whatever. But let's get back to, let's not get back to, let's get to a place where we start thinking about each other as people first and foremost. Being a part of this world world, this community, and let's focus on that. Someone told me earlier that that'll never happen, and that's the kind of philosophy, and that's the kind of mentality that will never get us to the place we need to be. You need to start changing your perspective on how you look at people, and look at them for the quality of their character, and interact with people who are healthy. Don't go for sleaze bags who will mistreat you, and beat you, and whatever. Don't spend time with people who will lie to you. Don't work with people who will lie to you. 
Work with people who have character, who have respect for you as a human being, more than anything else. More than anything else who have respect for themselves and for other people. Because people who hurt other people have very low self-respect. You could say, oh no they don't, they think they're better than everyone else. No they don't, they're insecure and they want to bring you down. Because you're, you may have something going for you that they envy or they're jealous of. And jealousy is not a healthy thing. Respect is, is healthy. Jealousy and admiration can be healthy. Jealousy is dangerous and destructive. So I'm going to get off because I'm going off. But I encourage you to check out this preacher because I think it's real interesting talking about look at people as people and let's go from there. All right, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching. Just enjoy the people around you and judge based on character, quality of character. Don't judge based on this because just like skin, well, skin tone doesn't fade, but we all get wrinkles, we all get old, and we all will eventually leave this version of existence and move on to some other plane. And if you're religious and you believe in God or Jesus, or the Holy Ghost, or Allah, whoever, I'm sure these people said, judge not lest ye be judged. Look at people as people and move forward from that. Take care of yourselves. I appreciate your time. And as always, my friends, live with passion. See you later.